A warm welcome back to the VLUX CHF Champions League and with it a look back at some of the stars of last season. We visited the Flensburg heroes of the VLUX CHF Final Four after their triumph and took a look at their team of the future. Both Danish representatives had more than just their homeland in common on the first match day. Find out what. And the keepers made it really difficult to choose the top saves. Plenty of top class saves in this first round of matches. Zagreb face off against THW Kiel in their opening home game. For Domagoj Dovniak, it's a return home. The Zebras have to play in this first round of matches without injured captain Philip Yisha. As usual, THW have started aggressively in defence and are breaking at speed. A superb pass from Schurstrand to Klein, and he gives his side an early 6-2 lead in the 13th minute. The Croats are relying on their young keeper, Filip Ivic. He's keeping them in the game and giving the scoreline some respectability. But THW have enough quality in their ranks, even without Yisha, to keep Zagreb at arm's length. A great goal from Ekberg from the wing. It's 12-7 to the Zebras. But after the break, Zagreb managed to claw their way back into matters. Stepancic powerfully gets a goal back and the atmosphere is boiling over. 40th minute, 14-15. And then sensationally, the Croats grab their first lead. A hammered effort from Stepancic, 19-18 in the 47th minute. What a turnaround. And the shock is complete. Zagreb conquer the Giants' THW. Hats off to them for this performance. Also, I don't know what happened. All these people who came... They were like a wind in the back, you know, we, we fight for each other, we were a great team, like some past games we played. What a game we have here! Listen, congratulations, great season last season here in Metallurg. Are you expecting the same this season? Season is good for me and my team. Uh, we respect Paris and uh, uh, I hope uh, for a win today. And, and what about Igor Vori? What about Marco Kopliar? What about Jakub Goyun? Big monsters playing yes, against yes. you today. That's going to be hard. Yes, yes. It's very, very hard for me and Metal Hugo. It's uh, Vori and Goyun and Kopliar. It's uh, good players in uh, in world. Uh, I uh, I hope uh, uh, my my team uh, is win. A summer full of speculation is over and now it's clear that Philippe Gardon is the Paris coach. His star ensemble are looking for revenge in the Boris Tchaikovsky today. It's a year since HC Metalurg beat the big favourites in a very bitter loss here. And the noise levels are deafening as Moisovsky, on his comeback, makes it 1-0. But Paris don't look bothered by the cauldron atmosphere this time out. PSG look extremely fit and sprightly. This finish from Vori tops off a superb move. Gardon has already shown in Chambéry what a talented coach he is, and now he's found his motivation in Paris as well. But then Metalurga to find their feet, and they also have a stroke of luck. The ball goes to Dan Manaskov, and he gets a goal back for 7-8. The Macedonians have managed to keep this match open with their sheer passion. Every goal is being celebrated as if it were the winner. It's 11-11 after 30 minutes. And the new arrivals are the ones doing the business for Metalurg. Vladan Lipovina, remember the name. He's even consigning Renata Vugrinic to the past. PSG, though, remain calm even in phases of play when things aren't going their way. Their concept of play and the individual performances are fine. Mikkel Hansen, once again world class. The last few minutes, crunch time. And who's the man who seems unbeatable at this time? Thierry Omoye, of course. Titi with a top save. Omoye as well as Akombre both arrived at the club this summer. Two reinforcements that have had a big effect. Akombre seems to have taken lessons from Hansen in shooting. Metalo gave PSG a real fight but in the end lost 22-27. In the second half we just, I would say we continued doing almost the same things, maybe a little bit better. And uh, I don't know, maybe it was just uh, the quality or uh, 
just the persistence that we, uh, which, with which we played that, that won the game. La Rioja won against the Champions League rookies Brest by 39-31. A victory with enormous repercussions as the Spanish are top after the match day. The Zagreb victory over Kiel was the clear shock of the round. It has taken Alingsas HK five years to fight their way back into the Champions League and now they're ready. Mikel Franzen's team meet FC Barcelona in their opener. The Swedish home side are really giving it a go here in the opening phase against the Spaniards. Marcus Enstrom for 6-6. The veteran visitors are settling down now and are able to build up a lead. New signing Sigurdsson makes it 16-12 in the 24th. And the stars of FC Barcelona really shine in the second half. Karbatic spots Nodespo and the Dane converts his fifth goal in fine style. The young home outfit are bravely battling against Barcelona 7. Rookie Rasmus Torbjörnsson cuts the lead to 22-28. But there's a youngster in... ...net in the second half. And this is a sensational double save. With a goalkeeping performance like that, as well as good defense and some excellent playmaking, the Spanish are able to tear through the Swedish champions. With nine goals to his name, Jesper Nodespo is the man of the match, as FC Barcelona win with no problems, 38-28. It's a moment I will never forget. There's something that you don't ever forget. There's a special feeling. It still awakes wonderful feelings and gives you goosebumps. SGR my club and my heart beats for this club. I was just so happy. Not just for me, for the players. We had a hard, hard year. We lost the, the final in the, in the German Cup. That took very hard on, on me, personally. But uh, when we won the Champions League, we got our, uh, our winning spirit back. And it was beautiful. And I really like my players. Uh, I do anything for them. That, that's for sure. The massive celebrations are over, and SG Flensburg Handewitt are back. Comebacks and a few changes in personnel have been order of the day for the title holders. Their success is based on hard work, and their aim is always to win the next match. We have a couple of new players, uh, some experienced players like Sam Rasmussen, Liga Knudsen, Stefan Weinhold. We lost them and of course uh, that's something that takes time to, to replace and to get the new guys to fit in the team. But uh, we always have the goal to, to win. I reckon that we can integrate the new boys with the work of the coach and the experienced players. And then we'll also aim for the top this season. The gap left by Stefan Weinhold in Vrana's system will be filled by Johan Jakobsen. He has one of the hardest shots in the world, but the Swede still has massive shoes to fill. Johan has settled in brilliantly, just like the others. We get on well, and I think he's a dangerous weapon to have. He can help us a lot. I've seen uh, Holger uh, a long time, and, and I really like his profile and how he, he plays the game. And I think we can push it, uh, each other forward. And, and the things that we are good at. The recipe for success at SG remains the same. Hard work, having fun, and to give everything together to achieve their next success in the Velux EHF Champions League. <laughs> KIF Kolding Copenhagen take on their near neighbors from Germany, Flensburg, in their new jerseys. This is a battle with real tradition on this first match day. 
Above all, it's the keepers in focus. Asper Witt and Matthias Anderson. And we need only 29 seconds of play until we see one of them called into action. Kasper Witt with a hugely impressive save. And just over a minute later, it's Matthias Anderson's turn to shine for the fans. It's going to be a long match for the attackers. And this is probably the most highly anticipated comeback this season. Kim Anderson, one of the best right backs in the past, looks to be getting back to his best. 5-2 for Copenhagen with almost eight minutes gone. But their opponents also have a real weapon on the right-hand side of the back area. Holger Glandar cuts the deficit to 7-5. This is a great showing from both sides, with Anderson in the mood for goals. As in his pump, he rockets the ball home for 12-9. And KAF give us a real handball show in the second half, too. Sensational play by Anderson. He's definitely the best player in an SG shirt. But the prize in the battle of the goalies goes to Kasper Witt. His unbelievable performance is the decisive factor in the home win for Copenhagen. And then a youngster continues his fine development. Lasse Anderson gives his side a 10-goal advantage. No one saw that coming. The Danes blew the title holders away on this opening match day with a 35-21 final score. Holding, Barcelona and Plotsk all won their matches. The most surprising result was KF's big win over SG. Plotsk meet Barcelona in the next round of matches. That will be a cracker. Ten years after their triumph in the Champions League, Salia start the new season with the youngest team of all time. Their visitors in the first home match are Vada Skopje and their big name new signings, Laskovic and Sterbik. Despite Skopje's role as favourites, it's Selyo who have started on the front foot. The young Slovenian side's high tempo has got them a 5-3 lead after eight minutes. Selyo are playing a patient game in attack and are keeping the Skopje defence busy. David Miklapcic finds the space and gives the Slovenians a five-goal lead. Vada though need a little longer to settle. Only Alex Dozhibayev has come racing out of the blocks for them. His fourth goal and it's 11-11, the leveller. Vada fought back in only a couple of minutes. After the break, and it's time for Dibirov to show what he can do. We've seen him score goals like this before, but it's still a joy to see. A goal back for Vada. With support from the magnificent Sterbik in goal, Vada are able to turn the match around. Dibirov with his next flight, and that's 24-23 to Skopje. That's the visitors' first lead and comes after 54 minutes. Celia are giving their all to gain a point, but Sterbik is shutting them out in this final phase. A narrow victory for Vada in the end against the battling Slovenians. Fifth place in the top five saves is secured by Kasper Witt, an oldie but a goldie. He wasn't only the match winner for Alborg, he also made spectacular saves like this. A double save is always a showstopper. Gonzalo Perez de Vargas of FC Barcelona perfected the art versus Alingsas. Reichmann against Portner, and the award goes to Portner of Cadet and Schaffhausen. And top spot goes to Darko Stanic, a stroke of genius as he denies Abalo.
The Rheinecker Leuven go into the new season with renewed gusto. Coach Nikolai Jakobsen and Mads Mensa Larsen, who have both arrived from Aalborg, are supposed to give the Germans that little extra zip. Their first opponents on their return to the Velux EHF Champions League are Montpellier. The start of this match has been evenly balanced. Peterson looks fit again. He makes it 4-3 in the sixth minute. The Germans will this season again rely on their axis of awesome. Schmidt to Murhol and the Leuven are already ahead by three goals after only 11 minutes. The French seem nervous on their return to the big time. Even Kaptichnik is struck by nerves at the start as he's denied by the wonderful Nicolas Landin. But a little later and the old master reigns supreme. The ex killman Kaptichnik cuts the lead to 15-9. A really terrible start all in all though for Montpellier. And it's the same story after the break. The Leuven are better in all departments. Sigurmansson hammers home uncompromisingly from out wide. He's the replacement for Gensheimer, who has a knock. For us, he's one of the best goalies in the business at the moment, Nicolas Landin. The French have been poor, and Landin has relished making them even more frustrated with his saves. And the team from Mannheim are also quick as lightning on the break. Sigurmansson with a great goal for an 11 goal lead in the 42nd minute and has just about decided the match already. The Rheinecker Leuven celebrate a 35-24 victory over Montpellier, which never really looked in doubt. Nicolas Landin wasn't the only factor. I'm disappointed by the performance of my own players, above all, the ones who've already experienced of playing in this competition and know it well. Returning to the Velux EHF Champions League, Vesprem won by five goals at Chekhov. Vada and the Leuven both won their openers. Thirty-three twenty-eight. The final score as Schaffhausen host Kielce. We came out wanting to have control of the ball and play fast. We implemented that well, I think. We made a few mistakes and Schaffhausen exploited them and got some goals. But on the whole, we played a solid cover and in the end, I think we deserved the win. It wasn't until the 20th minute that Kielce were able to take control of the game. Why this happened is easy to explain. Nikola Portner was very successful in the first half as he showed his talent. Reichmann, who came to Kielce over the summer, can't finish here. At only 20 years of age, Dmitry Kuzel proves his worth against the Polish Star Ensemble. Schaffhausen keep the game up for grabs in the first half. At the beginning of the second, the larger class shown by the Polish champions is much more obvious. Denis Bunic hammering the ball into the top corner. At the end of the day, it is the experience and talent of the players that decides the outcome in Kielce's favor. A victory to kick off the season for Talon's boys. Tactic corner. The beginning of the season illuminating not only goals, but other important aspects of the game. The pivot here is Agina Galde, who decides the match using his blocks and runs. Pay attention to Agina Galde in the middle. Kielce starts the play and the Spaniard goes quickly in the direction of Jorka. Jorka can't come out to Tkatik due to Agina Galde. He goes into the gap, then still plays it perfectly outside. Goal for Kielce. The decisive factors are the runs and blocks of Yulen Agina Galde. Next scene, Tkachuk takes two men away. Agina Galde blocks Graubner, and Buntic can pull away almost unhindered. The pivot gives his shooters time for the effort. Agina Galde is proven to not only be a nuisance in the middle. Strelik runs in. Agina Galde engages Schaufhausen's right side. So Yuretsky has free reign. Although the goal does not count, the credit should go to the pivot. 
the role of the pivot. Sometimes he simply scores, but on other occasions he does important things. While they may not be in the spotlight, they are just as crucial. The Skywalker at supersonic speed on the counterattack, and Abalo brings the spin move, and there it is. He is a wrist acrobat. The angle is bad, but Tvetan finds a solution and puts himself in the top five goals. A typical Dibarov, nobody can do it quite like he can as he lobs it over the head of the opponents. Kim is back. Against SG, he pulls out a firecracker. Starting in the corner, a genuine delight made in Sweden. Check the scoreboard. Zagreb down by four. And first place for courage and exemplary play, Sandro Obanovic from the spot. Last season was Dunkirk's first in the competition, and they only managed three points for a sixth place finish in the group stage. Last year's last 16 participants, Alborg, are the opponents. Alborg handball in the red jerseys. Maestro and biggest threat in the first few minutes, Morten Slund. The Dane must step up and compensate for the departure of Mad Men Salarsen. But the northern French side, Dunkirk, HB Grand Littoral, weren't domestic champions for nothing. As last season, they surprised many by leaving Paris and Montpellier behind them. Both teams are fairly balanced overall. Olerovic makes the difference in the opening phase. And although Dunkirk have developed good chances, the end result stays the same. Olerovic is the man. But there were actually goals in the match. Check this out. Harvard Tvetten from a very bad angle, and he makes it 10 to 10. Absolute class, simply brilliant. With three top stars, Larsen, Jakobsen, and Wagerstedt leaving Alborg, the new additions, along with Guardiola, have integrated well. In the second half, Alborg's Emil Berggren puts a little distance between them, as it's 2017. He caused quite a sensation during his time with Sevehoff in 2011-12. Dunkirk can't compensate for the multiple two-minute suspensions, and that is certainly one of the main reasons for their loss. The French show some fight, but against Alborg, or rather Aravik, it's a little too late. In the end, Alborg get the victory, 26-21. A clear statement at the start of the Velux EHF Champions League. Remarkable. Alborg have shown that they are in form and have integrated their transfers early and will certainly be contenders. Sigurd got a tight win over Zaporozhye. In Group D, everything is wide open behind Kielce. They meet Sigurd in the second round of fixtures. Full of tricks and the top scorer. It's fun to watch Timur Dabirov this season too. He deserves his place in our team of the round after his 11 goals. It looks as though Momir Ilic is also going to be in the running for the top scorer crown this season. He started with 11 goals, the best left back this round. Young Miha Sabet made his debut in the Champions League and incredibly helped himself to 10 goals and showed plenty of promise for his team, a true playmaker. Strong last season and this season he seems to have gone up a notch. Alex Dushibayev, our best right back area player this match day. What a match from Copenhagen. And their best shooter was the ice cool Kasper Eerming Andersen. Seven goals from the wing, a great performance. 
The Danish pivot made a great start to the season. Nine goals secured him a spot in our best seven. Ola Erevik really earned his place in our team of the round. The Norwegian only let in 21 goals in total.